Hi everyone, my name's John and in, in this video I go over two header reusable elements and a sign up slash login reusable element used in the bubble beginners template I've created. Uh, the header reusable elements are used to navigate about the app and one of them is used to sign up slash login a user. In this video you will learn how to use reusable elements, how to navigate between pages, um, how to set conditions for different pages, and how to log in or sign up users. Let's do this. So this is the header page I've created. Um, you can't actually edit the header elements here. I just created this page so that um, I can show how they work in the same place um, in the live preview. So if we want to find a header, we can either access them from double clicking and pressing the edit element button, or we can go in the top left and under the pages, we have all the reusable elements. So you can see the header here, the header two, and the sign up and login pop up. Um, so if we click on one of them, you can then edit this header and any page that contains this reusable element um, will be edited if we edit it here. So the first thing I did when setting up these reusable elements was set up the database. For the header page, the only time it uses the database is for the video link and that data type is pages and this data type was actually set up for the home page of the beginners template so that each page could be displayed in a repeating group. Um, so as you can see here, the video is the field that we search for, and it's a list of texts, texts because there can be more than one video. Um, with this search, we actually just pick the first video. Uh, the second reusable element, the header two, uh, this doesn't use the database, but the reusable element pop up, the sign up slash login pop up that's within it, this does use the database um, for to sign up a user, to create a user. So as you can see in the database, we have this user data type. And this user data type comes with every bubble app. Um, so as soon as you create a new app, it will already be there and it will already have the email um, here. So for this app, all we need to do is take the user's email and their password. Um, the password isn't kept in the database because that's encrypted and kept elsewhere for privacy. So next, I set up the privacy rules. We put privacy rules in place to stop um, being able to send the wrong data to the wrong user. So there are no privacy rules on pages because all of the page pages fields will be public. Um, on the user data type, we have one privacy rule, which is current user is this user. So this means that only users themselves will be able to see their own information. Um, this is an app wide condition that is in place at all times. So you can't accidentally show the wrong user someone else's email. If later we decide to make um, a user's profile public, we can either click choose the field here or we can add in a new privacy rule. Now let's have a look at the first header. So the first header is used um, as the header for the whole template. So basically when you're on any page of the template, you want to be able to get back to the home page so you can access another page or you want to be able to see the video for that page or quickly access the documentation for that page. 
Um, so on this header element, we have the title and we've, I've added in some dynamic information to this so that you can see what page you are on. So we've got beginner's template, which is always shown. And then I've added in current page name and then a find and replace function to replace the dash that bubble adds for um, page names with more than one um, word. And that replaces, you can't see it here, but there is a space there. So it replaces it with a space. And then I've added in the function capitalized words. So that adds a capital letter to the first letter of every word. So there is also a condition on this. Um, that condition is when the current page name is index, it just changes the title to this um, static title here. So then I have the three buttons here and they're kept inside a group. So this, the reason they're kept inside this group is because they have a condition that when the page is on the index page, um, none of these buttons are visible. This is because they actually, they don't do anything when they're on the index page. So next we have this button, which is actually a link. So the reason it's a link is so that we can, it, so that it opens in a new tab. Um, for the video, we open up an external URL because it's opening up the YouTube video in the new tab. And we do the search, search for pages. We find the current page name, and then we pick the first item of the list of pages, which it will only be, there will only be one choice. Um, and then we pick the first item of the videos. The next button again, which again is actually a link is the documentation again, so that that can open in a new tab, but this time it opens a internal page, um, which is the documentation internal page. And we send a parameter to that page. So as you can see here, as you can see here, we've ticked send more parameters. And what we send is, is the current page name. So the reason we do that is so that when the documentation page is opened, it reads this parameter and um, automatically opens the documentation to the correct page. Then lastly, the most simple one is the all pages button. Um, so if we click on start slash edit, slash edit workflow, we can see that this button goes back to the index page. So it just has a simple action, go back to index page. So now let's have a look at header two. So the aim with header two is to sign users up or log users in. So when you open the page, the first thing you can see is this icon. This icon actually won't be visible um, on a desktop and this will only be visible on mobile. So if we click on the responsive settings, you can see that we have added a hiding rule um, so that it's hidden when it's above greater than 667 pixels wide. So if we just scroll this here, you can see that um, it disappears and the login and sign up button is shown. So we'll just hide that for now and we'll show the login and sign up buttons. So this group is shown when a user is on the page but isn't logged in. The login button opens the sign up and login um, pop up showing the login group and the sign up button opens the same pop up but showing the um, sign up group.
but uh, if you see how that works, if we go and watch, look at the workflow, um, you can see that it triggers the login. The reason we've got it to trigger a login is because there's more than one button um, that does the same workflows. So we've created custom workflows for the login, logout, and sign up. So for the login, you can see that first we set a state of the pop-up and we set that state as login. So that means when this pop-up opens, it will be showing the login group. And then we just show the pop-up. Pretty much the same thing for the sign up, except that we set the state as sign up. And then with the log out button, um, which is here, we trigger, trigger the custom logout workflow, which just logs the user out. Um, so if we go back to the UI, you can see that, um, that this is shown when the current user isn't logged in, but not in on mobile. And the same applies for the logout button. So if the user's on mobile, they'll see this icon. If they click this icon, um, you can see in the workflows that that will toggle the group focus. So the group focus is here. And a group focus is a group that will pop up on the screen and be relative to um, a certain element. So for this element, it's relative to the icon and we've just offset it so that it goes to the position we want. So what a group focus does, it pops up on the screen. And then if you click anywhere else off the focus, it will disappear. Um, so within this focus, we have the same three buttons again, first, the sign up and log in that users will see when they're logged out and then the log out button that users will see if they're logged in. So if these groups will be hidden and collapsed, as you can see here, um, the, when a user's logged in. So now let's look at the sign up and log in. Uh, pop-up. So as you can see here, this reusable element is set as a pop-up so that we can put it on a page and when it's, um, when we show it, it will pop up on the screen and it means the user doesn't have to go to a new page to log in or sign up. So this pop-up is made of two group, two main groups, the sign up group and the login group. Um, I've stacked them on top of each other just to make it easier to you easier to edit them in the editor. Um, I then, when they're hidden, I collapse their the elements height so that it you can only see the one at the time one at a time. So the way they are shown is by a state that is set for the whole. Um, pop up and that state is called mode. So when that mode is sign up, you can see that there's a condition that shows this makes this element visible. And when it's login, this element is not visible. And the same applies for the login, but the opposite way around. So the sign up has an email, a password input, and a confirm password input. And then they, the user can press sign up. When they press sign up, the user will there will be signed up using that email and the passwords that they um, applied. Uh, this will create a new user in the database. The pop up is then hidden. So. This app actually has a test account, which will just automatically log, the, uh, which means you can automatically be logged in. So if you're editing this template for your own use, I'd recommend just deleting this button. 
There's also this login um, button here. So if you already have an account, you can log in. So that just changes the state of the pop-up to log in and then sets the focus to input email. So set focus is just really handy for showing the users, directing the users where you want them to be, if you like. So what that does is it, it makes the email input here um, focused. Then on the login um, group, very similar to sign up, except when you press login, um, the user is logged in rather than signed up. Um, and then the group's hidden again. It also has a sign up button, which will switch back to the sign up group, same as how the login button did. And then it also has this forgot password button, which opens a um, pop-up, shows a pop-up um, to allow a user to reset their password. So it, it'll hide the main pop-up and show this pop-up here where a user can put in their email in the, this input and then they can have a reset email sent to them. So this is an action that's already within Bubble. You don't need to do anything special um, and send. So it's called send password reset email. You can write whatever message you want and it will send a use, an email to that user um, with the option to reset their password. Um, if you are ever unsure about anything with the template, you can click on um, any element, workflow, or action, um, and see the notes. So if you click on the notes, and it'll have a note explaining exactly what that element does. I hope you enjoyed the video. Most apps will only need one header. I've shown the two headers in this video because they give different bubble lessons. Um, if you have any questions, uh, get in contact with me or leave me a comment and I will try my best to answer them. Head back to the home page of the template to find another page to learn and have a great day and good luck.